Okay, uh, first up, so if you uh, don't get anything and then you're just like, oh no, I forgot, don't worry, we have gift certificates, just check them out on Adafruit. You can print out these cool graphics and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to mention this each week all the way up till like the 25th-ish, um, but we do have gift certificates. People always say, but you have to receive gift certificates? Yes, we do. We do. Okay. All right, turn off. We just have some more wick. I love solder wick, and this is just uh, some thinner wick. Uh, it comes, this is about uh, one millimeter wide. It comes in a roll about one and a half meters long, like five feet. Uh, it's low cost, easy to use, great for reworking along with a solder sucker. These are perfect for fixing up your mistakes. All right, next up. Next up, these are our classic box speakers. They're four ohm, one, four, four ohm, three watts. They're nice and strong. They've got mounting holes, which I love. They're box, they have a pretty good sound and they don't you know, get damaged too easily. And there's two wires coming at the end and uh, usually we have them with a JST connector on the end. This time they have bare stripped wire uh, that's tinned. Uh, so great for just plugging into, we have a couple boards that just have terminal blocks. You just slot these right in and boom, you make an audio. All right, so let's move the overhead just so we can see what they're like with a human hand. Yes, so this is a speaker. So this is yeah. four ohm, three watts. It's a box, mounting holes, and then here are the stripped wires. All right, next up. Glitter. It's snowing outside, so why not bring the snow inside? So we wanted to um, show making some snow globe projects with some cool festive glitter. These are actually, like I think, used for nail art, but they're so cool. i got to show these. Yeah. on the overhead because still images don't do them justice so these are like super like cybery glittery and then i think actually i'm gonna even plug in i've got this uh i've got the ring light i'm gonna show later but this like oh, that's so cool so they have like a beautiful shimmery effect and then uh you can uh fill your snow globe with them and you've got snow so you you're better at twisting it, but you want to give it a twist because you're you got the right wrist motion. I guess so. Yeah, there you go. To make yeah. them flutter. Oh, that's tough. But um, you twist it, and then the yeah. the little glitters kind of go everywhere and shimmer beautifully. And it's like, why are you making this bright light? So um, you get like it's like approximately three hundred. Oh my god! It's, Can you turn the light off. Yeah, I think it's also the glittering effect is confusing it, but. Uh, they're just like little skinny glitters. You can also use them to decorate stuff, but um, you just get a little tin here, a plastic uh, screw top. I'll never fit these back in. If you drop some, it's okay, because there's a lot. Glitter. That's that. Okay. Next up. This ring light, which I was just showing that was so bright, the camera got confused. So these are actually used for microscope lights. And we actually just like the ring light part. Um, it basically you give it nine volts and it gives you this very nice diffused neutral you know white color um let me show it on the overhead you can also take it apart if you like it but it does come with a nice protective uh metal case so inside are like a couple hundred like little 0603 leds it's got a 2.1 millimeter dc jack on the end uh, i plug it in it's going to freak out it's incredibly bright um, but it's very even which is nice and it gives you uh, shadowless uh, lighting effects. So, you know, sometimes people use these on microphones, some uh, microscopes, sometimes people use these on cameras or video lights, but it's just a great little ring light. Um, doesn't have a dimmer because the dimmer wasn't that great. So we decided to not stock the dimmer, but you can dim it yourself with a PWM signal. I thought this would be more for DIY projects because you can always just, you know, buy ring lights if you want, but uh, just getting the ring light element, I thought would be handy for like costuming, or science projects, or I don't know, just something neat. So, ring lights. Okay, next up. Ooh, then we got the BitBot. So this is a um, little robot that you can build for a micro bit. And it's called the Pi Buggy, I think. Let me get the name right, because it's on the inside. But it's, uh, I think, the Pi Buggy. And you, uh, it's solderless. It comes with um, two, Continuous rotation servos on the side. It bolts on the front here. It maybe uses like those SMT standoffs, which I love. It's got uh, two NeoPixels on the bottom, uh, kind of a classic uh, ball uh, caster. And uh, you can program it with your micro bit or you can control it remotely. You can code it in uh, make code. Probably also you can code it up in uh, uh, MicroPython. But 
we got little we have just doing a little square square dance but it's it's cute and it's fairly low cost so it's not like you know if you're going to buy a 17 dollar micro bit you don't spend 50 bucks for the robot so check it out it's a really cute little uh bit bot takes about a half an hour maybe an hour to build if you don't have a lot of experience with um, putting stuff together but it's an easy build start show tonight besides you lady ada and our community USB-C is here. Well, we've been actually using USB-C in a couple boards. We're still in the transition period, so you're gonna see maybe one or two more boards with micro B as we transition to USB-C. But USB-C, we have a guide on it. Uh, it's great because it's reversible. It can handle high currents, can handle high voltages. Um, it's very strong and also um, modern computers are all kind of coming with USB-C ports. So uh, we wanted to put in the store a 10 pack of the connectors that we use because folks have been asking about them because these are very nice low cost connectors that are basically they're not designed for like display port user Thunderbolt they're like okay you just want USB data and power you can see it here with our STM32 uh, F405 feather which is the first board we use USB-C with um, other than just like a simple breakout um, and uh, let me grab a USB-C connector so I can yeah, and by the way, we have a um, huge guide on learn.adafruit.com all about USB-C. We looked for some type of resource out there yeah. and couldn't find one. So, um, and we also have an article coming out in 2600 soon yeah. about USB-C. But there's things like alternate mode and the length of the cable matters and the different types. And there's 3.2, Rev2, Gen2. Um, there's a lot of weird things with USB-C. So, um, check out the guide too. Yes. Because there's some cables that if you're powering like a laptop or a monitor, you have to be very specific and there's markings you need to look for. So we, we help demystify that. Um, but in addition to that, there's a lot that goes into the, the hardware to make all this work. Yeah. So what's nice about these cables is they're reversible. They click nicely, they're strong. Um, but these connectors only have one row of pins, so they're easier to rework. And it also makes them a little bit lower cost. Uh, than the ones that have like every pin exposed, which for most people you don't need, uh, unless you're if you're doing Display Port or Thunderbolt, you can afford more than like you know a dollar for a connector. These also have through hole pads and uh, surface mount, so you can pick and place them. Um, you pick them up, you place them, or you place them by hand. They've got two positioning dots. They've got um, the pads on the end here. I think it's like 16 or so different connectors, uh, and then these four through hole pads. They go through the PCB and they make it um, mechanically strong. So if you plug it in, because it is this is an anchor point, they don't snap. I mean, if I really tried, I'd probably tear the PCB in half, but uh, they're pretty strong and they don't really move anywhere and they, they are defended against shear and, and pulling force. So uh, if you'd like to use these, we may have a pack of 10 of these connectors. Uh, these are loose, but they'll come in a, a tape when you get them. And that's USB-C connectors. Okay, and with that, Lady Ada is... Yes. Want to recap? Yeah, let's recap. New, 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 new. Gift certificates. Get them if you forget to get someone something. That's very succinct. <laughs> uh, we have solder wick in a thinner option, now about one millimeter wide. We have a four ohm, three watt speaker in a box to really like with mounting holes, and it's got tinned and stripped wires at the end for easy terminal block usage. This uh, snowflake glitter is great for making snow globes, decorating your project. They kind of have this beautiful shimmery effect. They're so cool. This ring light is uh, intended for use with the microscope, but I think you guys are gonna come up with something cooler for it. Give it nine volts. It gives you incredibly bright, but even lighting all the way around. This bit buggy, uh, put it together and plug on your micro bit. Uh, no solder required, and you can make a remote controlled or programmable robot. Comes with tools even. And a 10-pack of USB-C connectors. We like these connectors. They're easy. They're fairly low cost. They're half through hole, half surface mount. They're kind of the nicest USB-C connectors. We recommend them. People have asked where we got them from, and now we have them in the shop. Half through hole, half surface mount, half bare. All USB-C. Yeah.